Hello, my name is Robert Haynes from the Sugar Flower Studio based in London. On this video, what I'm going to be showing you is how to be making the Moth Orchid Centre using the Simply Nature Moth Orchid Centre, which is here. Um, so it will turn out to look like this, and this is the, uh, the Moth Orchid with all of the leaves and the aerial roots. So what I need to do is I need to be creating what I actually call, that looks a little bit like a frame uh, made out of wire. So this is the finished frame on here, and these two pieces of wire here, I've made them like a U, and then another U, a little bend in the wire. This will actually go down into this cavity here, and then down into this cavity over here. But to make all of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking a 28 gauge wire, and then a pair of pliers. So I'm going to first of all place that down inside the pollen tracks just into the middle here and then place the needle nose pliers down inside just to gauge the actual length that I need to be bending my wire. So placing the pliers just a little bit down there and then bending the wire down straight down. So now I've got a hook then I'm going to be placing the pliers directly onto that hook and then bending the wire down the other way so they're level in line with my pliers. Take the pliers off, okay, and then placing the pliers level with the other little bend here onto the other wire that I've just bent, placing those down onto there and then bending that part up. So it's actually like a W. Then pinching these two ends of the W together, so they then correspond and fit down inside the two little holes down inside the vena. Then I can then simply just place my finger just onto that part there, and then bending it down, there will already be a cut in the end of the vena when you receive this in the uh, um, when you buy one of these veiners. So you're then going to be just pulling the wire ever so taut. Just check that little bit there. Sorry. So just placing these two into there and then bending the wire back and taking the pliers, placing those down inside this top part and then just measuring where I've got the pliers so they're central into this top cavity then take the wire out and then bend the wire straight down and putting a hook that will fit down into this part so bending a little hook up onto there pinching that together Put the pliers on top of that hook and then bending, whoops, and then bending that part so it's level with the other wire down from here. So it doesn't matter if it's a little bit wide there, I prefer it to be a little bit wide so it, it actually sticks all, um, around the flower paste. Making sure though that this, the two little parts at the front do travel backwards on themselves so they go down into there and then placing the other one then down inside the back and making sure that the wire then comes out straight and that's what you'd actually need for the next part of the video that I'm going to be showing you how to put the paste down into here and then you'll be placing that all into, an, into a freezer. So just a little bit more of a close-up just onto the finished little frame on here, so just a, a, like a, a U, an upside down U on the end and then a little hook on this side and then that is made from a 28 gauge wire. So what I need to do is first of all taking a paintbrush, I'm going to be adding in a little bit of Crisco down inside the cavity down into the centre. So not too much at all, just lifting this up and then just opening the cavity and then placing that down onto the inside there, not too much at all. And then opening up this cavity up at the top 
and then placing a little bit of the Crisco down inside. If you get too much on there, then simply just take your finger and then just take off the excess, not too much. So then I'm going to be taking some flour paste, warming up the flour paste a little bit, and then placing a ball, just like the size of a pea, down inside the top cavity If the paste gets a little bit sticky, just use a little bit of cornstarch just to tap around. Then taking a ball tool, and I've got my cornstarch in this puff here, just taking the ball tool and then pack this down inside. So it's really, really pressed right down inside. And where the where the cut is along the back, just using a scriber and then just pushing that in so none of the paste comes out of that top portion. If it does, you can later on, you can cut it away later on. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually pinching and pressing and pinching and pressing and encouraging this paste here to then go down the central channel. Make sure that this is nice and thin along the back here until it reaches the two pollen tracks at the front. Then taking another small piece of paste, which I'm going to warm up, taking a pair of scissors, just make this into a teardrop shape, and then taking a pair of scissors, just cutting down the center to give me a two part, and then opening, sorry, wrong hand, and then opening by pushing underneath you're then going to be pushing this down inside the two little pollen tracks at the front there. So really pressing that right down inside, taking your ball tool again, and then really packing that right down inside. You're then going to join this all together, still keeping it nice and thin down the center, join it all together, and then just remove the excess paste from around the two pollen tracks. You don't want any residue left over just until you can just see the two holes there. So nothing at all on the rest of the veiner. Just tidying that up. And then you're going to then insert the wire that you previously made. So taking, taking the wire making sure that you have the two wires at the front facing backwards. No need for any glue at all. You can put the wire into some water and then just spin the excess off if needed. Um, this paste is very sticky, so I'm just gonna place and push that down onto the inside first of all, and then direct this top loop at the top, the hook there, just pushing that down as well. The rest of the wire will travel down through the actual split in the silicone, okay? And then pinching all of the paste around the wire and pushing the wire right down inside, disguising all of the wire. You're then going to be placing all of this into a freezer for about half an hour until it's frozen you want it really nice and stiff, and then you'll be able to then take all of this out um, in one go, and that will be in the next part of the video. So I've just taken this out of the freezer. You need to work quite quickly before it defrosts. So just opening up this part here, just carefully, carefully lift off this part from the back, and then taking your, your finger thumb around the back part here. You do need to be a little bit ambidextrous for this part. Pushing there and then taking the wire and then just pulling that little part out. Uh, so if you couldn't see that so well, but you're just removing just that part from out of there to give you this part, which you're then going to then leave into an oasis 
just sticking it into the oasis for that part to dry. You can do this when this part is quite leathery, but uh, um, for safety, you know, safety purposes, I would probably leave this to go really, really quite hard. So I'll place that into my oasis and then I'll just start the rest of making the centre of the moth orchid and uh, I'll use one that I made yesterday um, which will be harder than this one. What I'm going to be doing is I am going to be veining all of the, uh, the centre of the moth orchid. So I'm going to be placing cornstarch, cornflour just down over the whole of the mould on both sides. Now, because I've already done this part here and here, it doesn't actually matter if I get a, uh, a residue of cornflour into there. But do make sure that you do get plenty of cornflour, cornstarch onto here, so the paste doesn't stick and you'll get a really beautiful vein. So just leaving that to one side, I'm going to be placing cornstarch just down in front of me, and then taking some paste. Now the only reason why I'm using this deep red paste is so it's a lot more visible for the video. So just rolling that into a little sausage, a little bit of cornstarch on the outside and then placing it down. I don't necessarily want my paste to actually stick down onto the board. So plenty of cornstarch on the top and then taking a rolling pin, just starting to roll this on each side, you don't want it to stick at all. Just rolling out from side to side. Now, all moth orchid centers are slightly different with regards to thickness. So what I tend to do is I'll just feel the edge of my paste. Once it starts to feel to the thickness of the real plant, then I'll stop rolling the paste. Now I want this to be thinner down towards me because that's where these very, very fine tendrils are going to be. So just keep on going with the cornstarch and rolling that paste nice and thin down towards me. Then taking the cutter, making sure that I put cornstarch onto the cutter as well and then directing that down onto the flower paste on the area that's nice and thin down in front of me down here for the tendrils. Placing that down onto here and then pressing gently into the cutter and then you'll actually be able to then lift the whole of the paste and the cutter up and then with your with a cornflower finger just go over and just scraping around the edge of the cutter and the tendrils down here work away from you like that with your thumb this will give you a perfect perfect cut with no furry edges around the center of your orchid you're then going to be taking a paintbrush and you're going to be placing all of this then down on top of a foam pad. So I'm just bringing the foam pad down, put some cornstarch corn down onto the actual pad. Then you're then going to be taking a paintbrush and pressing down into the center and the whole of the the whole of the, um, the orchid will come out. Now you need to work quite quickly on the tendrils that's down onto here. So what I like to do is actually use the edge of um, any tool at all really, I'm just using this one here, I can just go down and thicken this part here. They tend to be a little bit thicker, just at the top part there. Now you can have these as long as you like, some of them are extremely, extremely long. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just start to rolling halfway, just there. And I will be breaking part of this off, but I just want to roll and roll and roll and roll and roll to get them super, 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 super thin. But just like really rolling into the actual pad like that. Okay, so just rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling, and then they become ever so thin. You could have longer, thicker ones if you wanted to. That's the reason why these cutters were designed this way, so to give you the option of whatever length you wanted the tendrils to be. 
they do try to make them more or less the same size on each side, but as nature is, they don't actually have to be exactly the same. So just rolling the paste, rolling and rolling, just a little bit of cornstarch onto there. So rolling and just stretching them onto here. That one's gone a little bit shorter, so I'll just make this one the same size. It's perfectly fine. Then taking a ball tool and going around all the edges of the paste, so going halfway onto the paste and halfway onto the board. Don't press too hard, otherwise it will become far too large for the actual um, silicone veiner. Now I like to just elongate these parts up here. I actually call these the ears of the uh, of the throat. So just a little bit more with my ball tool just up onto there, all depending on the type of orchid that you're trying to replicate in nature. You don't need to put anything at all down onto the centre here, not with the ball tool, but just into the middle, just a tiny little bit, just to extend these a little bit, just there. Now, the cutter has been designed that you can actually make um, the paste nice and thin and then do two sizes, so it'll actually give you um, two different sizes of orchid centre. But this one, I'm actually spending a little bit harder with the paste and doing a full size centre. Then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to be bringing the two parts of the silicone mould in front of me and I'm then going to place the, the um, cut out shape on top. So I'm actually going to be using this side on here and then I'm going to be placing this one that directly then down on top. So with, I'll just bring this into shot so you can actually see how I actually place this on. Going underneath with a paintbrush, gently, gently go underneath and then lifting this up it is very very delicate and then just taking the bottom triangle part and then place that then down on top first okay so carefully lift the I'm going to call them the ears carefully lift the ears up in place and using the paintbrush dry paintbrush just position everything in place and then have the two little tendrils coming out over the edge if you do have very, very long tendrils, then don't press so hard with the veiner when you vein it down at this area down here. Okay, so just making sure that everything is centralized on there. And then placing the veiner down on top, I tend to turn it to the side so it's easier for me to direct down on top. I'm going to be taking my paintbrush and lifting both ears up just to check that they are both inside and in the right place. If there's anything coming out, then do take your paintbrush and then move it around. Gently pressing down with your fingers, even pressure. This will just give a beautiful vein front and back. This is a unique veiner. I don't know any on the market that actually give you, for the Moth Orchid Centre, a vein front and back. So when I mention that they are unique, that just means that I have not seen any at all. Um, they are a beautiful, beautiful veiner and they give a vein front and back. So gently, I'm not pressing here at all. I don't want to be breaking off these little tendrils at the bottom. But I am going to, just down this triangle part here, I'm going to be just pushing inwards like that because there is a raised vein along the front of the triangle. So then carefully remove, just taking your, your paintbrush and just releasing the two ears down to there. And if there are any little little uh, pieces that have come out to the side, just, just trim onto there just with a pair of scissors. Um, but it does give you a beautiful vein front and back. So then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting some glue down onto this part 
down here okay and then I'm going to be gluing on the part that has already dried that I made earlier on in the video and gluing that down onto that. Um, for the little tendrils that are down onto here you can just curve those back with a paintbrush or you could remove and place this back onto your foam pad and you could actually use a scriber and you could just wrap these around a scriber but I just tend to use a paintbrush and then just give them a little bit of movement on there. So taking some glue, now you could just use a Tylo Space glue for this or you could actually take a piece of the flour paste and mix that together with some Tylo's glue um, to make a very, very strong glue. And then you would add, um, put some of that along the back of this part here as I'm doing. Totally up to you. They do tend to stick very, very well. Not had any fall off with the Tylo's glue as of yet. But if you wanted to be extra safe, then use that other glue that I've just mentioned. Then placing this down, onto the center of the flower. Just placing that down onto there. There we go, just getting it into place. And then taking a dry brush and you're going to be just pushing that then down onto that thin channel and really just pushing right down. Now this piece of paste on here that's connected to the wire is nice and hard so it's not going to squash at all. So it's better always to do this maybe a day before so this, um, this part is very hard so you can really push nice and hard down onto the center. If there is any, um, any residue around the back then just simply, there is just a little bit just here, just simply just take the scissors and just cut that little part off. Okay, so then I'm going to be bringing this bumpy foam in front of me now. I already do have one that I prepared earlier on here that's already drying, this one here, okay. And how I'm going to be positioning my newly made centre is by just lifting up each one of the ears from here, just making sure that they're nice and loose and taking a paintbrush just underneath so when I do carefully place this then down onto the bumpy foam it's already released already. So just carefully lifting the whole of the silicone vayner up and then I'm going to be then just placing it down onto some bumpy foam and I've just got a little bit of, uh, of this foam at the side here which will cushion. You could use cotton wool if you wanted to. So just gently, I'll do this on the side so you can see a little bit better. Just gently, gently releasing the whole of the, it is a little bit like a delicate operation, but just gently releasing him down onto the bumpy foam and placing the two ears down onto this foam at the side. I'm going to bend the wire so it just touches the foam so it's a lot easier to support. And then taking a little bit of foam and placing that underneath this part here. You need to then allow this, I'm just going to press into one of the ears on the side there. They tend to curve slightly forwards over the central part, central channel. And um, as I was saying, you need to allow this to go and dry. Just these little tendrils there, just bend those slightly forwards. They're all different on, um, and every, on every orchid. So just positioning him onto there. Allow this to dry for a day, and then you would then color the whole of the orchid with lots of different edible dusts and making your paint um, be painting down onto the center here. So uh, this orchid center was made with the Simply Nature veiners, and there is all of the, um, the full set on there. So all of the petals are front and back for all components of the orchid. And there will be some pictures to follow shortly after this video of showing you some of the orchids that I've made in sugar. If anybody would be interested in attending any of the Sugar Flower Masterclasses, they can contact myself through my website or Jennifer through her website at Sugar Delights. The Moth Orchid Closed Buds on the Moth Orchid here, these have been used by using one of the silicone veiners from the Simply Nature range. 
Also as well with the blackberries, um, these are from my range, the Sugarflower Studio range of blackberries. Um, the technique is the same, so by uh, bending the wire up and, uh, and inserting the wire down inside both cavities to then give you a 3D closed bud or fruit. So it's exactly the same procedure. So please do contact me if you will be interested in any of the classes. Thank you.